Good morning, North Mount. Good morning. All right. Do we want to try that again? <laughs> Good morning, North Mount. Good morning, Gabriel. That's a lot better. <laughs> Welcome to the house of the Lord. It's good to see everyone here. And for those joining us online, the Lord is already here with us and with you. God has been faithful to us over the past year, not a single case, not one from this church. Amen? Amen. People keep asking me, were you guys open all through? Yes, we were. <laughs> we followed all the rules. We followed everything. And God, in his infinite mercy, kept us. Amen? For those of you watching online, we strongly encourage you. It's time to come back. We miss you. So please, come back. We're begging you. That's how much we miss you. I know when, uh, when I go out for several hours, my sons, they go, where have you been? And I go, well, I had to do so many things. And one thing they don't say is, we really, really missed you. And when I say it, you could tell they missed me. So for those of you watching online, for those of you still hesitant about coming, we have lots of space for you to be distantly and safely, what's that word? Safe distance here within the church. We just want to see you. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord. It's another wonderful Sunday morning. And this morning, as we worship, let us worship in what? In spirit and in truth. Because God honors that. Let us rise up as our ram leads us in the first song. Yeah, it's a foot stomper. Next song, I'd like you to do a little bit more. Oh, okay. Let's get involved. Oh. Let's worship the Lord. Amen? Amen? In the next four weeks, I'll be talking 
on the series, David Danced. Amen? I'm sure <laughs> Vi, Vi chuckled. She knows my obsession with David. But there was something David did that made people wonder. There was a song, that song is titled, When the Spirit of the Lord Came Upon David. The Bible said, he danced. Amen? Amen. How many of us have the Spirit of the Lord within us? Woo. Mm. <laughs> Amen? We're pretty chill. <laughs> sometimes we dance, sometimes we yell, and sometimes we jump. Amen? God is faithful. I know Pastor Greg doesn't normally do this, but Gabriel does. Amen? <laughs> This, today we're going to talk about something I believe we all need right now. Well, we'll be talking about faith in God and whose words we as Christians, as children of God should rely on. Amen? Amen. Today we'll be looking at the title, God's Report, A Recipe for Faith. And I'm sure some of you are wondering, what, there's a recipe for faith? Yeah, there is. There's a recipe for everything. There's a recipe for laziness. There's a recipe for greatness. There's a recipe for success. There's outlines and guides for different things in our lives. Amen? This Wednesday will be the last Wednesday for the summer that we'll be having our online prayer meeting and Bible study. We ended a series, um, Oneness Embrace, last week. But this week, we'll be taking a look. We'll be praying, actually. We'll be praying for the church and just chatting, just talking about some of the things we've encountered this year and praying for ourselves and praying for the church and praying for our family members, amen? So if you still want to join us, reach out to me, reach out to Ray, reach out to Mabel at the office. They can forward the invite to you, amen? Mm -hmm. Over the next few weeks, uh, we'll try, we want to do some fun things here at the church. We want to get together. This week, we are meeting at Bonus Park. And please, if you're able to make it, we're looking at around 6 p.m. on Friday evening. If you're able to make it, let Mabel at the church know, and she'll take down names, and then we will let you know exactly where to meet. Amen? Shirley Ann is the one with all the details. God has been faithful. She is well in Jesus' name. She sprained her ankle yesterday, so that's why she's not here this morning. But we'll be hearing a lot more. Over the next uh, few weeks, every two weeks, we'll think, we'll like to get together maybe on a Saturday and just have fun together. I know um, Irene McLeod will still like a chance to beat me at Scrabble, and I know some of you want to play chess as well. There's a whole b a bunch of things we'll be doing at the park, amen? And um, in the Pastor Greg is away, and while he's away, I will be um, running the services. I will be reaching out to some of you to help with different parts of the service. So don't be surprised when I call upon you. I know um, everyone here is a minister of God. Amen. God is faithful. Mm -hmm. And as we continue to worship this morning, I want us to bow down our heads as we pray. Heavenly Father, we worship you for who you are. We are grateful to you for that which you're doing in our midst. When people are saying cast down, you are saying lifting, lifted up. And Lord, we thank you, Father, for you have been our sustenance in this church. You've been our help. You are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, our provider. Well, thank you, Father, for every individual who's a member of this church. 
We give you glory for that which you're doing and that which you continue to do. We worship you, O oh Lord, for you are the God here at North Mount Baptist Church. And your love fails not. Well, thank you, Father, for love shown in different people in this congregation. Well, thank you, Father, for grace extended to different people all around us. We worship you, Lord Father, for we know your presence is already here, O oh Lord. And we thank you for your spirit. Emmanuel, you God who are with us. As we continue to worship you this morning, let us worship you in spirit and in truth. Let our minds, our body be present here, O oh Lord. Let our thoughts and the imaginations of our heart be acceptable to you this morning, O oh Lord. Father, we worship and bless your holy name. Continue to be with us, for we pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' precious, mighty holy name. And the church says, Amen. Amen. Aram? Turn to you. Hope is stirring, hearts are yearning for you. We long for you. So when we see you, we find strength to face the day. And in your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hear the sound. to you. We welcome you here. 
One name outlasts the ages Through time his truth revealed While kings may pass like shadows Our God is sovereign still And he shall Upon the throne, hallelujah, hallelujah, to the Lord forevermore, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. about now? There we go. One more time, please. God is good. All and all the time? God is good. One of the things I found out about God is the fact that I know he's a God who reigns forever. Amen? Amen. And this is a God, always not just sovereign is a God who cares for us, amen? amen. Today we're gonna, um, the scripture reading is taken from 2 Kings chapter 20, verse one to 19. Ray, this is incorrect, so you might wanna follow what's on there. Thank you. 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 1 to 19. We're going to read about a man called Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a king. One of the interesting things about the life of Hezekiah was how much, how much faith he had in God. Amen? Amen? Remember I said the topic for today is God's report. A recipe for faith. I'm reading 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 1 to 19. I'm going to read from the message version. Sometime later, Ezekiah became deathly sick. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, paid him a visit and said, put your affairs in order, you're about to die. You haven't long to leave. Hezekiah turned from Isaiah and faced God, praying, Remember, O oh God, who I am, what I've done, 
I've lived an honest life before you. My heart's been true and steady. I've lived to please you, lived for your approval, and then the tears flowed. Hezekiah wept. Isaiah leaving was not halfway across the courtyard when the word of God stopped him. Go back and tell Hezekiah, prince of my people, God's word, Hezekiah, from the God of your ancestor, David, I've listened to your prayer and I've observed your tears. I'm going to heal you. In three days, you will walk on your own legs into where? The temple of God. Amen? I've just added 15 years to your life. I'm saving you from the king of Assyria. And I'm covering this city with my shield. For my sake and my servant David's sake. Isaiah then said, prepare a plaster of figs. They prepared the plaster, applied it to the boil, and Ezekiah was on his way to recovery. Ezekiah said to Isaiah, how do I know whether this is of God and not just a fig plaster? What confirming sign is there that God is healing me and that in three days I'll walk into the temple of God on my own legs? Verse 9. This will be your sign from God, said Isaiah, that God is doing what he said he'll do. Do you want the shadow to advance 10 degrees on the sundial or go back 10 degrees? You choose. Ezekiah said, it will be easy to make the sun's shadow advance 10 degrees. Make it go back 10 degrees. So Isaiah called out in prayer to God, and the shadow went back 10 degrees on Ahaz's sundial. Shortly after this, Merodach Baladan, the son of Baladan, king of Bal Babylon, having heard that the king was sick, sent a get well card. Not necessarily. <laughs> uh, this is a paraphrase, English, co uh, contemporary paraphrase. They don't have get well cards back then and a gift to Ezekiah. Ezekiah was placed and showed the messengers around the place, silver, gold, spices, aromatic oils, a stockpile of weapons, a guide at all of all his prized possessions. There wasn't a thing in his palace or kingdom that Ezekiah didn't show them. And then Isaiah the prophet showed up and just what were these men doing here? Where did they come from and why? Ezekiah said, they came from far away from Babylon. And what did they say in your palace? Everything, said Ezekiah. There isn't anything I didn't show them. I gave them the grand tour. Then Ezekiah, and then Isaiah spoke to Ezekiah. Listen to what God has to say about this. The day is coming when everything you own and everything your ancestors have passed down to you, right down to the last cup and saucer, will be cleaned out of here, plundered and packed off to Babylon, God's words. What's yet? Your sons, the progeny of sons you've begotten, will end up as eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Hezekiah said to Isaiah, if God says it, it must be good. But he was thinking to himself, it won't happen during my lifetime. I'll enjoy peace and security as long as I live. Amen? Thus end the reading of the scripture. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his word. In my mother's womb 
you for me with your hands known and loved by you before i took a breath when i doubt it lord remind me i'm wonderfully made you're an artist and a potter and the canvas and the clay You make all things work together for my future and for my good. You make all things work together for your a healing light just beyond the clouds though I've walked through the fire I see clearly now I know nothing has been wasted no failure or mistake you're an artist and the potter I'm the canvas and the clay when you make all things work together for my future and for my good you make all things work together Thank you, Aram. We're God's canvas and we're the clay. One of the interesting things about my life that I've come to understand, I'm just a clay in God's hands and he is a potter. There are those times in my life when I had decided I want to control my own life. There were those times in my life, this is what I want for my life. I remember um, way back when, back in Nigeria, um, for you to get into your university, you have to sit for two exams. One is called the West African Examination Council exam, and the other one is the JAM, Joint Admission Matriculation Board exam. Basically, it's just a way of making money as far as I'm concerned. 
But the interesting thing about it is those two exams determine what kind of school you would attend. At least that was the design. Humans have, we have this tendency of designing something and doing something different, don't we? But God in his infinite mercy has a design and a plan for our lives, amen? We heard the story of Ezekiah. How many of us have heard that story before? A few of us. So, this is where Gabriel gets a little bit different. I actually follow the part in, in the Bible where Jesus asks questions and he expects responses back. Amen? So I'm going to walk. Ray, forgive me. I know this is difficult for you. I'll try to stay up here, but forgive me. I want to ask you, what didn't you like about that story? Or what did you like? Anyone? I'll start calling names. I know everybody's names. What did you not like about that story? Or was there something you really love about the story of Ezekiah? Yes, Henry. This morning when I got up, I had an email from a nephew of mine, a drunk and dying. Hmm. And he was preaching a sermon, which, which he did eight or nine hours ago, because he's in Europe. Yep. He preached the very same sermon as what we're talking about today. Amen. And I see God's spirit at work. Yes. He has plans for each and every one of us. That's right. No one is excluded. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Yes, Irene? He had faith. He had faith. Okay. Anything else? Yes, David? Sorry? How merciful God is. Yes, Ray? Yes, God was willing to move the sun to hell backwards for Ezekiah. Ezekiah tested God. Now let's get to know Ezekiah a little bit more. Like I said, the topic today is God's report, a recipe for faith. We live in a time where we get different kinds of reports, don't we? Going back to that story I started telling earlier on about Jam and Wahek. I wanted to become, I wanted to go study um, electronics, uh, electrical electronics in university, and God said, that's not my plan for you. After four tries, imagine, four tries, I gave up. I said, God, okay, I give up. What do you want from me? Well, you know what I want from you. Guess what I used in getting into university? My first result. Oftentimes, we hear reports today, and there's this one that's really new, fake news. The origin of fake news, some kids were willing to make some money in Macedonia about five years ago, and they started, I mean, in, on YouTube, Twitter, and all these places, you make money by how many people visit your site. So these kids were playing around with fake stories. And they came up with several stories about the U.S. presidential election. And of course, they started circulating them on Facebook. They made tons of money, but a lot of people believe those reports. Until today, we have people celebrating ignorance. We have people not really looking for facts. We have people believing in different reports. The doctor says to you, oh, you only got one year to leave, and you believe the doctors. They say to you, well, you're going to lose your job in three months, and you believe the report. They say to you, you're getting evicted. You believe that report. And they say to you, your relationship is not going to last, and you believe that report. Let's look at the life of Ezekiah. Who was Ezekiah? Briefly, from the book of um, 2 Kings chapter 18, 
verse 1 to 6, we were told that Ezekiah was a 25-year-old who became king. How many 25-year-olds today do you know who are kings? Or 25-year-olds who are presidents, prime ministers? We believe they cannot succeed. Why? Because some people decided, oh no, it's those of us who are in the know that should be ruling. The Bible said as Zechariah ruled for 29 years, and this was a report God gave of Ezekiah. The Bible said he was a good king. So remember, young, lived for, ruled for 29 years, and the Bible said he was a good king. But that's not what we read today, right? When you read from the book of um, 2 Kings 18, 19, and 20, I decided to create a word cloud, and this is what came up. When you read 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 1 to 6, there was something that was special about Ezekiah. What do you see that pops up in that word cloud? Anyone? This image behind me. King, God. When you read the story of Ezekiah, you will understand how much Ezekiah trusted God. Ezekiah was a little boy in our own context. He was a young man, but the Bible said Ezekiah trusted God. And the Bible also said God had a good report of Ezekiah. Now, this young king faced a lot of problems. These were some of the problems they faced. Sennacherib, king of Assyria, demanded tribute. It was saying, who was Sennacherib? Sennacherib was this, this guy, he wanted to build a large empire and they started destroying nations, cities, taking their kings to bow and getting tributes from them. So he decided to come to Ezekiah and said, you know what, I want you to pay me tributes and I'll leave you alone. But Ezekiah, who trusts in God. Now let's, let's listen to what the servants of Sennacherib said to Ezekiah. This was what actually what um, Ezekiah responded to Sennacherib when Sennacherib demanded that Ezekiah pay tribute. This is what he said. King Ezekiah sent a message to the king of Assyria at his headquarters in Lachish. I've done wrong, I, admit, I admitted, pull back your army, I'll pay whatever tribute you said. The king of Assyria demanded tribute for, from Ezekiah, king of Judah, 11 tons of silver and a ton of gold. Ezekiah turned over all the silver he could find where? in the temple of God and in the palace treasuries. Ezekiah even took down the doors of the temple of God and the doorposts that he had overlaid with gold and gave them to the king of Assyria. Sometimes when we are being taxed, sometimes when the devil comes knocking, he asks of us sometimes things we're not supposed to give away. In our lives, there are certain things we've gone through. There are certain situations that have been part of our existence that the devil is the one orchestrating it, asking us to give over those things. And sometimes we give them over. And then guess what? It's never enough. Then king of Assyria did what? He sent enforcers because that was not enough for him. So the king of Assyria sent his top three military chiefs, the Tartan, the Rapsaris, and the Rapshake, from Lachish with a strong military force to King Ezekiah in Jerusalem. When they arrived at Jerusalem, they stopped at the aqueduct of the upper pole on the road to the laundry commons. Back then, you washed your clothes you bathed, you did everything in public because there was only one place to do that. So when they set up, 
when the leaders, these three military chiefs and their army came, they came to that common place. This enforces threatened and taunted Ezekiah and the people of Judah. I have had calls from debt collectors over the past few years. And sometimes they threaten you. Oh, we're going to get this CRA to start deducting money from your account. Oh, we're going to get this. We're going to do that. We're going to do all of those things. And sometimes, even recently, we have scam artists, fraudsters calling people up and saying, we're going to take your house. We're going to take this if you don't pay this amount. And people panic. People get in such a state that they want to give them everything, not knowing they're not even from the government. This enforces that threatened and taunted the king of um, King Hezekiah and the people of Judah. This is what they said. The third officer, the Rabshakeh, was the spokesman. He said, tell Hezekiah a message from the great king, the king of Assyria. You're living in a world of make-believe of pious fantasy. Do you think the mere words are any substitute for military strategy and troops? Now that you've revolted against me, who can you expect to help you? You thought Egypt would, but Egypt's nothing but a paper tiger. One puff of wind and she collapses. Pharaoh, king of Egypt, is nothing but bluff and bluster. Oh, are you going to tell me we rely on God? But Ezekiah has just eliminated most of the people's access to God by getting rid of all the local God shrines, ordering everyone in Judah and Jerusalem, you must worship at the Jerusalem altar only. So be reasonable. Make a deal with my master, the king of Assyria. I'll give you 2,000 horses if you can provide riders for them. You can't do it. Well then, how do you think you're going to turn back even one row, one raw buck private from my master's troops? How long are you going to hold on to that figment of your imagination? These opt for Egyptian chariots and horses. Then he stepped forward and spoke in Hebrew loud enough for everyone to hear Listen carefully to the words of the great king, the king of Assyria. Don't let Ezekiah fool you. He cannot save you. And don't let Ezekiah give you that line about trusting in God, telling you God will save us. This city will never be abandoned to the king of Assyria. Don't listen to Ezekiah. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Listen to the king of Assyria. Deal with me and live the good life. I'll guarantee everyone your own plot of ground, a garden and a well. I'll take you to a land sweeter by far than this one. A land of grain and wine, bread and vineyards, olive orchards and honey. You only live one. So live, really live. Verses 32 to 35 says, no, don't listen to Ezekiah. Don't listen to his lies telling you God will save us. Has there ever been a, good, a God anywhere who delivered anyone from the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Amas and Upper? Where are the gods of Sepharvaim, Anna and Eva and Samaria? Did their gods save them? Can you name a God who saved anyone anywhere from me, the king of Assyria? So what makes you think that God can save Jerusalem from me? Just imagine, someone says, oh, we're going to take this church, we're going to take this building, we're going to take everyone in it captive, and you can do nothing about it. We're going to put you all in prison for worshiping God. We will take everything you have, all your possession. And then they say to you, no God, because God doesn't really exist. No God can save you from us. How would you feel? Just imagine. This is make-believe right now. Just imagine the President of the United States lays a siege against Canada. 
because of our oil and all the things we have and all the good people and wonderful people we have, say, you know what, Canada, we're going to take your land. We're going to annex it and make it part of the United States of America. How many of us want that? Really? We don't want that. Amen? Nobody wants that. But just imagine, they have more, more in terms of military power than we do. Just imagine the lay siege in us and they say they want to take everything. How many of us will trust Trudeau to take us to battle and win? Nobody. How many of us, I know I'm from Nigeria, I'm getting on the first plane to, out of here, back to Nigeria. Why? Because these people, humans alone cannot save us. As a tire, at this point, guess what he must have been thinking. They even brought false report about God. This is what they said. Do you think I've come up here to destroy this country without the express approval of God? The fact is that God expressly ordered me attack and destroy the country. For those who of you familiar with American history, I'm sure you're familiar with, um, what's it called? Divine uh, Destiny. Basically, God has given us this land, we're taking it. And these people used God, lied about God to Hezekiah and his people. And then they lied. Don't listen to Hezekiah, they said. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Listen to the king of Assyria. Deal with us and live the good life. We'll guarantee everyone a plot of ground. They said that to the Indians several years ago. They said that to the African Americans several years ago. A bull in uh, 70 acres, I think, I believe it was. Don't listen to Hezekiah, don't listen to his lies, telling you God will save us. Then they deny God's sovereignty. Can you name a God who saved anyone anywhere from me, the king of Assyria? So what do you think? What makes you think that God can save Jerusalem from me? And this was Hezekiah's response. This is how you know the kind of person Hezekiah was. Chapter 19, verse 1. When Hezekiah heard it all, he ripped his robes apart and dressed, dressed himself in rough burlap. Basically, he was mourning. Secondly, the next thing he did, the Bible said, he went into God's house. Amen? Then he went into the temple of God, the Bible says. Verse 14 to 15. And then he took the letter from the envoy and read it. And again, the Bible said, he went to the temple of God and spread it out before God. This was after the response he got from the king of Assyria. They kept threatening him. We all know blackmailers. For those who watch crime fiction as much as I do, once you start getting blackmailed, they'll never stop. Because they got you the first time. They'll keep asking for more. Hezekiah already gave them everything. Even the doors from the house of God. And guess where Hezekiah went? The Bible said Hezekiah went into the temple of God and spread it out before God. This is what is interesting about Hezekiah. In the passage we read, when Isaiah gave him that message, about him dying and now recovering from his sickness. The Bible said, Hezekiah turned the other way and did what? And prayed, amen? He sent for the prophet in response to the king of Assyria's threats. He sent Eliakim who was in charge of the palace, Shibna the secretary and the senior priest, all of them dressed in rough ballup to the prophet Isaiah son of Amos. Gather all your elders, 
Call Ray, call Shelly Ann, call Raph, call everybody in the council. Call Fred, call Avril, call everybody who's part of the council. Go call Pastor Graham, wherever it is. We need to talk to God. The Bible said, Ezekiah prayed to God. And Ezekiah prayed, oh, how we pray. God, God of Israel, seated in majesty on the cherubim throne. You are the one and only God, sovereign over all kingdoms on earth, maker of heaven, maker of earth. Open your ears, God, and listen. Open your eyes and look. Look at this letter, said Nacarib has sent. A, a brazen insult to the living God. The facts are true, O oh God. The kings of Assyria have laid waste countries and kingdoms. Huge bonfires they made of their gods. There are no gods and made from wood and stone. But now, O oh God, our God, save us from raw Assyrian power. Make all the kingdoms on that know that you are God, the one and only God. This is what was interesting. Ezekiah said, yes, these are facts. As so many people will say today, what are the facts? These are facts. Yes, the kings of Assyria have laid waste to countries and nations. They have destroyed their gods and their religions. But you, O oh God, are the one and only God, Ezekiah said. And this was God's response to Ezekiah. God spoke victory through the prophet. When you read chapter 19, verse 20 forward, so it wasn't long before Isaiah, son of Amos, sent word to Ezekiah. This is God's word. You've prayed to me regarding Sennacherib, king of Assyria. I've heard your period prayer, this is my response to him. The Bible said Sennacherib was what? Defeated. I'm reading verse 33 to 37. God said, it will go on by the same road it came. It won't enter this city. This is God's word. I'll shield this city. I'll save this city for my sake and for David's sake. And it so happened that that very night, an angel of God came and massacred 185,000 Assyrians. When the people of Jerusalem got up next morning, here it was a whole camp of corpses. Amen? The Lord shall destroy all your enemies. Amen? The Lord shall destroy all those who raise their voices against you. The Lord shall destroy everything that stands in front of you to block your access to God. Amen? This is what happened to Sennacherib. Sennacherib, king of Assyria, got out of there fast. He headed straight home for Nineveh and stayed put. One day, when he was worshiping in the temple of his god, Nisroch, his sons, Adramelech and Shereza, murdered him and then escaped to the land of Hararat. His son, Esarhaddon, became the next king. Ezekiah didn't raise up an army. Ezekiah didn't think of strategies. Ezekiah didn't do anything to save himself. What he did was do what? Trust in God, amen? What he did was rely on God to save him. What he did was take the matter to God. What he did was consult God. What he did was ask God to intervene. This is a Ezekiah's approach to life, both public and private. Remember, he was taunted publicly. And then he had his own private battles. When he was sick, every time, every single time, you read about Ezekiah, every single time something happens, Ezekiah taunts to God. The Bible says, so God was Ezekiah's first and last recourse in everything. Ezekiah did not consult with men. Galatians 1 verse 15 to 16, this is what Paul said. When, God, when Paul encountered God, even get then God had designs on me 
why, when I was still in my mother's womb, he chose and called me out of sheer generosity. Now he has intervened and revealed his son to me so that I might joyfully tell non-Jews about him. Immediately after my calling, without consulting anyone around me, Paul was this guy who was chasing God. He didn't consult with anyone. It was a Pharisee through and through. It was one of the perfect ones. It was chasing to kill people. But when God intervened in his life, when God showed him the designs he had for him, the designs he had for his life, guess what happened? He did not consult with any man. What happened? He turned to God and he trusted God. Hezekiah trusted absolutely in God. 2 Kings verse eight, chapter 18, verse 24. You can't do it. Well, then how do you think you're going to turn back even one raw buck private from my master's troop? This is what they were saying to Hezekiah. And guess what? David said, some take pride in chariots and some in horses, but our pride is in the name of the Lord our God. Amen? Say after me, my pride is in the name of the Lord my God. My pride is in the name of the Lord my God. David said, some may trust in chariots and horses. Ezekiah didn't trust in chariots and horses. He could gather and try and attempt to save his people, but no, he knows that God is the only one that can save them, amen? These are the rewards of trusting God's report. God will fight our battles. There were reports, different reports that came to Hezekiah through in his life. The Bible says, thus says the Lord. This is one of the things I grew up with. I grew up in a Pentecostal church. And every Sunday, there's always a prophecy. Whenever you hear, thus says the Lord, everybody's quiet to hear what God is saying to the church. Today, God speaks to us in different ways. Are you listening to God's report or are you listening to man's report? Are you listening to fear dictating what you should do rather than listening to what God is saying? Ezekiah did not depend on this fear. Ezekiah did not depend on the people around him. Ezekiah did not depend on his riches. It did what? It trusted God in all things. And God fought his battle for him. Exodus chapter 14 verse 14. God will fight the battle for you. And you just keep your mouth shut. Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 4 says... God, your God, is right there with you, fighting with you against your enemies, fighting to win. Amen? And Romans chapter 8 verse 31 says, so what do you think? With God on our side like this, how can we lose? How can we lose? We've got God on our side. He did not consult with anybody. God, he consulted God. God will answer our prayers when we call upon him. Psalm 91 verse 15 says, Call me and I'll answer. Be at your side in bad times. I'll rescue you. Then do what? Throw you a party. Psalm 145 verse 18 says, God's there listening for all who pray. For all who pray and do what? Mean it. Amen? Remember this morning we talked about Let us worship God in what? In spirit and in truth. If you're a worshiper of God, a true worshiper of God, you know that your heavenly father is always there right by your side. You know that he's there listening to you. You do not need to consult men. All you need to do is what? Turn to God. Amen? Shall we pray? Emmanuel, you, O oh God, who are with us always. You are the one who is with us in all things. We worship and bless your holy name, for, Father, for we know in you we have everything. In you we have victory. 
when the world around us is chaotic, when people are saying there's a casting down, you are saying there is a lifting up. When people are saying it is impossible, God, we trust you, for we know with you everything is possible. You were the beginning and the end for us. Ezekiah trusted you. Lord, grace for us as a church, as individuals in this church, to turn to you in all things, to turn to you and remember that we can trust you, to turn to you and remember and know that you've got our backs. Father, give unto us. As we go forth this day, Lord, be with us. Let your grace be upon us. For we pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' precious, mighty, holy name. Amen. Let's rise to our feet as we join Haram in singing the last song. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Let's rise to our feet. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him. Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take Him out of His world, just to rest upon Him. Promise just to know that saith the Lord. Jesus, oh, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin to self to cease. Just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus. Precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Oh, how sweet. Oh, how sweet. Oh, okay. We'll go to verse 4. I'm so glad I learned to trust Thee, precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know Thou art with me, will be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him. Precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. To trust in Jesus. The grace to learn to continue to trust in Jesus. May He go with you this week. The power of the Almighty God that sustains and keeps you in the face of threats, in the face of fears of the world, in the face of chaos and crisis, to trust God. May He be with you 
And Lord, as we leave this place, let your spirit go with us. Let your presence abide with us. Let your power and your grace to understand that you, are, you hear our prayers and you listen to us in all things. Let these and many more go with us in the name of the Father, that of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless. Have a nice week.